In referring to the methods and analysis, the initial data set had six main variables. Number of ships, the maximum size of the container ship, TEUs, which refers to 20-foot equivalent units, the number of shipping companies involved in the trade, the number of services okay. that are working in the trade, mm -hmm. the number of shipments per year that have been calculated and recorded. Together, these six main variables will be given a rank number. The values of the variables are sorted based on mean, mid, and max for each parameter. Each parameter generates a weight between 0 to 3 for the visualization purposes on the map. The value 3 represents a weighted path, a thick line. As frequently trafficked under a 1, a thin line would be a weak path. The value 0 represents a non-existent path. The sum of the generated values are calculated yielding a final weight by averaging the weights, the mean value normalization, as specified in our pseudocode example. As we can see, in programming terms, we have a for loop with two countries, one as a source node, the other as a destination node. The nested loops are a bunch of if statements for evaluating a specific path weight for a given parameter, for example, number of ships. A value is therefore deduced based on minimum and mid and maximum value of the parameter for each instantiated variable. In this case, A, B, C, D, E, or F. Finally, the final line weight variable averages the deduced values to obtain a final weight for the connected node or country. The running program will execute a timeline feature and will calculate the average for all years. Averaging is necessary for evaluating the performance of a connected node, which is a port of country, such as its demographic comparisons. We visualize this by creating a yellow flag per node with a sum notation on the map prior to the specific annual analysis on each transportation path. Perceivably, the flags as populated each represents a year neighboring the yellow flag, which is our averages on UNCTAD's annual statistics. Uh, by clicking on them, we could see the values for that particular country. By displacing the timeline bar, however, for a certain time period, flags will be populated for those years only. We collectively combine more than one variable in real time, and the paths are sorted for the user. For example, a real-time coincidence factor of a co-occurring hurricane as our weighted greater than zero affects a transportation path. What if it is intersecting with the path? Of course, this is weighted as a 3 on the map. What to do next? Does an alternative route to avoid this path exist until the hurricane passes or rests? Yes, we do offer an alternative path solution using polygonal analysis. We calculate the latitude and longitude between nodes producing distances. Is it happening with the vicinity of the occurring transportation, for example? This is a schematic representation of how a path is rejected even as being an alternative one from source node shipping goods to its destination node. As we can see, the upper triangle is rejected since the coincidence factor for a hurricane intersecting the path is high. But once it passes, the value reduces. And for the direct path, when it gets close, the value goes up. So the safe solution temporarily say any shipment with respect to time speaking, would be the lower triangle for a safe journey. In calculating the alternative routes, calculations are executed to provide the shortest distance for both direct and indirect links for a selected node port country. UNCTAD reports that 17% of the shipments overall are done directly and the minimum distance computed was considered the best possible combination. The port matrix software will achieve more alternative routes in real time while considering the following earthquakes, hurricanes, radiation, and economic problems. This is merely an example for Hong Kong on its alternative paths in white against traditional directed paths in red connected to destination node American Samoa. We have already ran an example by our demo on one of the source nodes to destination. In particular, Australia was our source node and its destination American Samoa. To avoid data redundancy, when calculating hits on paths in our spreadsheet rows, relative to optimization, we used string search or node country name matches on a specific event. 
For example, Japan exhibits earthquakes frequently according to the real-time data set we downloaded worldwide. In our code, we also added the magnitude of interest. Say a value greater than 6 would be a hazard and could trigger more problems. An example, a tsunami hitting a nuclear plant. Hence, this node frequently becomes unreliable, even if chosen as an alternative route. For example, Hong Kong as a source via Japan to American Samoa as a destination. This spreadsheet shows hits between 0 and 3, as explained before, in terms of weight. In this case, coinciding with the path. And as you can see, the one on Fiji's path to American Samoa is a direct hit. The other example is on the economy of the node. In this case, currency conversion status relative to a U.S. dollar as our indicator. If weighted as a 1, is a slight variation throughout a single week analysis. Higher values approaching 3 will represent bad economy due to some events, say uh, a political turbulence experienced by that country. To avoid bad paths after sorting, we color code them relative to an icon customized on an event. The following events are the purple paths representing nearby earthquakes, a teal path for nearby hurricanes, a golden path for nearby fires, blue paths for nearby floods, gray paths for nearby sinkholes, purple paths for nearby strong winds, a dark green path for nearby thefts, and finally, a black path for piracy, which has been occurring more often in recent years. So the path with the same icon color is a bad one and must be avoided temporarily. We can verify and validate our color coded results with Google Earth's primary database, in this case the U.S. Geological Survey. Here is a good validation example on our data compared to USGS data on earthquakes. As explained in the demo, when we magnify, we'll get ages from past week corroborating with our analysis results in terms of custom icons on the map. So we run the Stored Visual Intelligent Database with Google Earth's database simultaneously. Now the system has proven to be quite intelligent. Conclusions. We are able to run simulations based on historical and real-time data on paths which are connected by nodes. We have in total analyzed and sorted at least eight main parameters with relevant weights, two of which contributed to environmental economic impacts on paths up to n value sorting normalizations. We have outlined the most dominant factors in this project, path coincidences, alternative routes, visualization, optimization, and intelligent decision support system strategies based on historical and real-time data sets. In addition, there are many potential add-ons that can be integrated to the port matrix software. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.